Chris, what were you thinking? I was thinking something even stupider than what I did. Welcome to the Lost in Transition podcast. Chris Gerard, Derek Tingle with Hello. you. Hello! Time for a special episode of the Lost in Transition podcast, brought to you by our friends at LB Endurance. LB Endurance turning you into a legit badass, or at least we're trying. Actually turning both of us both into of us. legit badasses at legit. this particular point. You can learn more today at lbendurance.com. Lana Burl is not here We'll She's here in spirit. Her, in spirit, yes. Got a little busy with things today. So Derek and I figured this is a perfect time to compare some training notes and, and talk about our coach while uh, she isn't in the room. Right, because you're doing something very... And we know she doesn't listen to the podcast. Right. There's we no do, way. We could really say anything we want Literally to right anything, now. As long as our listeners don't tell her. If, if anybody tells Lana what we talk about right now... We'll unsubscribe you. We'll unsubscribe you. <laughs> Man, we actually won't. And find and find a way to give you a poor rating and a review. <laughs> <laughs> you can so, find us in all these different places, by the way. And ratings and reviews are encouraged. Uh, Google Play, the TuneIn Radio app, iTunes, Stitcher, you name it. Search for us. We're probably out there. Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You do that so well, by the way. <sighs> it's like you've done it once or twice. But you way really, too many you just, times. It just rolls off right the off tongue. the tongue. You know, I, I'm I'm just happy to be a part of this. It's such oh. a professional side of you that, you know, I just don't get to see quite often. But. It's funny. Everybody says, you know, everybody that knows me knows that I don't necessarily talk the same way on the show as I do in real life. Uh, I'm not the world's most outgoing person. I'm not the world's most loud and projecty voice type person. And whenever anyone notices that and then they're with me and I just switch it on. <laughs> and it's, it's a subconscious thing. I don't even think to do it except for I know, okay, well, you know, professionally I'm by a microphone. I got I to gotta be, you know, projecting a little bit and think about what I'm going to say. But the number of people that I've surprised both here on the podcast uh, and in my day job at the radio station, you know, just being a conversation. Hey, how's it going? Whatever, you know, kind of doing the thing. And I'm not a real, like, aggressive in your face type person. And I turn it on and like, hey, here we are, you know. Hello. Like, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> I know Blake Ogle, uh, when he was first on the show, was like, watch him. He's going to do the thing. And then I couldn't do it anymore. <laughs> oh, <laughs> wow. So you're doing something really dumb in like nine weeks. Yes. And I'm saying nine weeks. It was nine weeks ago yesterday. No, nine weeks ago, two days ago. But I'm not willing to even admit eight weeks yet. Uh, I am... I'm doing, quote, Iron Man, unquote. Right. Official, not official Iron Man. You're going out and you're going to do 140.6 miles of triathlon. That's a really stupid idea, isn't it? You know, I'm I'm usually reserved with my opinions about things. <laughs> yeah, uh-huh. <laughs> but, yeah, I, I have been known here and there to say that that's really stupid. Yeah, I think that's pretty well established uh, so, by now. So how's it going? Let's let's check in on... on our good host's training progress here. How is the training going for the really dumb long triathlon? Well, to be honest, it's going well right now. Um, and, and I've got to say that despite the fact that I'm like really tired and sore today <laughs> and it doesn't, has no bearing on anything and I'm hungry and I'm cranky half the time. And yeah, it sounds like I'm doing it right. Yeah. Actually, you're you're really, doing it right. But, um, a little bit of backstory this winter I, I usually do running races during the winter and try to keep up on all three sports and for whatever reason this year i figured well i'm i'm doing iron man in in you know in august um actually i'm going to give credit michigan titanium 140.6 there you go uh, throw it out because there. this is a group of people that i actually know and care uh to all of the relatives it's like i'm doing one of those iron man tri iron man triathlons uh and that's hard enough for them you, to mom you, and dad uh, who are listening to this podcast right, right now it's like you know the explanation's not not uh not worth it um <laughs> but anyway so last winter knowing full well i was doing this triathlon i was like eh, i'm doing a 50k i should probably just kind of basically run and bike a little and maybe not swim at all for like weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks because we all know swimming's your strong suit oh anyway. yeah so uh -huh. taking a lot Beach of time well. off is great really great. good plan so we're already starting out great good job i literally between uh my 70.3 in mid-october and mid-march so we're talking four or five months something like that okay probably got in the pool four or five times 
that doesn't seem like a lot. I was not a frequent user of the pool. Um, and, okay. and that was noticeable. <laughs> Definitely when I yeah. took it back okay. up, even the bike, like I said, you know, I got in maybe two rides a week, but not very long. Um, certainly not anything that was uh, very intense or structured at all. It was mostly just time. Yeah. And so then I, I get through my 50K, which honestly was probably one of the worst races I've ever done. Um, you know, like uh, as I've said before, my my marathon PR was I think around three thirty five, and it only took me another two and a half hours to do that extra four point eight. <laughs> it was the best example I've had of a day just going completely wrong from about mile thirteen to mile thirty one. Uh, so it was a good. Ex- I'm glad that that was the fifty k and not the one hundred and forty point six yet. Right. Knock and on. It's, and it's you know it's good to have a complete garbage day every now and then because it's yeah it's perspective that I haven't them. had before and mentally it it does build something there. I mean, going through and fighting through something like that, it let's face it, it does put you in a place where it's, you can't do that in training. Oh, definitely. Definitely. So you, you just put chalk it up to that. Yeah. You had well, a it was an experience day. and it was yes. the, the most helpful thing about that experience for me too. I mean, I walked for 52 minutes straight at one point, which is not my style. Um, you know, literally it was three loops and I, I was almost deciding to not go out on the third and I've never had anything close to that happen in any race ever before. And I think in a way that was good because there is a chance, and I'm not trying to make it come into being by saying this, but there is a chance that something will go really horribly wrong. It probably a fairly good chance even And uh, during the 140.6. And just that kind of ability to adapt and say, well, crap, I'm finishing this thing. I'm going yep. to go till I can't go anymore. You know, that's, I don't know. That seems like maybe that experience was a good thing rather than if I would have just like cruised to it in another 30 or 40 minutes off my marathon PR and said, hey, this was easy and fast, yep. you know, and, and, you know, the experience was probably pretty good. Let me make a good disclaimer here, too. Uh, LB Endurance and Lana Burl was not my coach over the winter. That's a good thing to Let me say. make that disclaimer because... <laughs> That's as, probably one of the experiences that led you uh, to yeah, seek to, out the, the guidance of our dear coach, Lana. Yes. And, and you're gesturing toward her empty chair. This right, is like really she, sad. You know, <laughs> it, it's her chair. That's where she That's belongs. That's where she sits. I you know. know. Her essence. We miss you, Lana. <laughs> we miss you, Lana. Uh, but anyway, so... Yes. You did the 50K. I did. Which is longer than a marathon. Slightly. Which is dumb. Mm, I'd do it again. Okay. I owe it one. That's, I'll give you that. Yeah, you got to go back and get the revenge. I had a slight inkling while training for the 50K because I had some good 20 plus mile runs that mm, 50 mile, maybe, maybe someday, maybe not this year, but maybe someday. Yeah. And I think I'm, I'm cured of that till I get old enough where I'm so slow that I'm just basically hiking. And then at that point, <laughs> sure, bring it on. But <laughs> right. Okay. 50 K is the limit, I think. Gotcha. So, so I did that. So comparing a little bit of notes, again, we're like eight, nine weeks out from your big event. I look back when we were talking about doing this, I look back through uh, my old training stuff back from when I was at basically at this point in my training for Lake Placid. Right. And at nine weeks out, I had basically just done my uh, my Ironman midterm, as we called it, right. with, with Blake and Chris. Uh, we had done the Rev three seventy point three here in Knoxville. So you did a seventy point three not too long ago, right? You did your midterm, yes, Goose Pond, Alabama. And how did that go? How'd the midterm go? How? Yeah, you go? well, the midterm, as you put it, uh, <laughs> the it was it was right on where I thought it would be. Which is to say, it was not my best, but it was um, it was encouraging nonetheless. Yeah, because I'm at that point, you know, sixty, seventy days past the ultra, uh, really seriously into training by about six or seven weeks. All my previous seventy point threes have been end of the season, full, you know, full summertime to get acclimated to everything Mm -hmm. Uh, as we mentioned the lack of swimming which you know kind of came back to bite me pretty well you know that was pretty much just a survival swim uh, more than anything and then the heat really killed me on the run again it was another big run walk Um, my my previous 70.3s I had been averaging um, I'd have to go back and look but you know maybe mid upper uh, eights some low nine somewhere in there and running most of the time 
uh, and this was averaging 11s and walking about half of the time. Uh, to be fair, it was like 93 degrees, <laughs> and I had very little heat acclimation prior to that. You know, maybe yeah. two or three hot runs and never of that distance. And uh, so there were some things I learned, like about hydration, uh, just to try to get ahead of it. And you know, I mean, I had I had a lot to drink, but I could probably still had even more on the bike, for example, right. uh, beforehand to get uh, to it. And uh, I took on a lot of ice, you know, some of it was just survival. And honestly, if the 140.6 is of that same heat and humidity, there's probably going to be a lot of shuffling and walking in that yeah. too. It's I just mean, it, kind on, of inevitable for honestly, someone Honestly, you're going to be shuffling and walking a lot of that, that marathon Regardless anyway. Regardless of, of whatever I mean, it just, is. Um, unless, you're, unless you've trained specifically for a full out run for a full marathon when you're off the bike. Right. I mean, there are, there are people that we interview here that yes. just fly. And then there's us mere mortals that, you know, it's it actually kind of hard for the day too. <laughs> I mean, you know, my goal, and I think probably the same as your goal is to go out and just do it. Yes. You know, neither First of one us got to do it. You know, yeah. I've got an inkling of time. Like, this is what I think a good day will put me around here, yeah. but you got to have the goal. You, you know, if everything blows up and it takes me, you know, 16 hours and 55 minutes, yeah, I did you it still, still the line, you know, man. like that's, that's a uh, pretty good, you know, overall, I think for me, but yeah, talking more about that goose pond 70.3, I had a different set of goals going into it too, which I think was really helpful. And, and this is something that uh, just my perspective was changed a little bit on because having done stuff at the end of the year before being very competitive, very perfectionist. Um, and a glass half empty type of person, we'll put it that way. You know, I mean, that's, that's just kind of true. And I was challenged by coach Lana going into this to enjoy the day, to say hi to people on the race course, make friends, congratulate people, do all that stuff. Thank the volunteers. And oh my goodness, the volunteers at this race were some of the best I have ever seen at any triathlon ever. Awesome. They were all so concerned about our well-being out there. Uh, we had kids that were getting kind of chewed out by their parents because they were volunteering and they were young, maybe eight years old or something because they were trying to give us too much stuff. They're like, <laughs> no, he doesn't need a water. Leave him alone. Like he's already had four. He's good. He, you yeah. know, like, you know, they're like, That's you want awesome. a water? They're chasing after me. It's like, and, and, and there was one little girl. This was, this made my day. Um, she was at one of the aid stations and she said, you know, you want ice water or whatever. And I'd already had enough for that. And I was getting close to the end, maybe a mile and a half to go. Uh, no, about two miles to go at that point. I was going to pass them one more time. And I said, not right now, but when I come back by, throw it at my chest. And I figure a kid's going to love you yeah. know, getting, getting an adult to say, hey, just throw water yeah. on me or whatever. And... I came back through and they had packed, started packing up the table and she was gone. I was oh. like, oh man, oh, that's too bad. I get a hundred yards from the finish line and I'm picking up pace a little bit. Right. You know, like I always, uh, even at pistol <laughs> where I averaged like 12s, I kicked it down into the sixes for the last, you know, quarter mile. Yeah. Like there's just that, you get that other finish world line league. Kick, yeah. yeah. So, I mean, I was starting to pick it up or whatever. And, then I spot her right there and she sees me, this girl, and she's like, do you want me to throw the water now? She had water. She was waiting awesome. to throw it on me. And I slowed down enough so she could just splash it right in my face and across my chest. And it was great. That made my day. <laughs> uh, and, and I literally talked to just about every single person I passed on the run course, which I've never done before. Um, it's an awesome experience. Isn't it, it? Is, it is. And it becomes easier the more you do it. Cause I, that's not my personality. My personality is like, if I know you, I'll at least nod your way. Like, yeah. Hey, we're doing this, but you know, it's not, I'm not the person that yells and screams at people or, or, yeah, I've just, it's just not, but just once you get into the habit of it, uh, it's nice. And going a little bit slower just because you had to, you know, I, I had extended conversations with maybe three different people on the run course, found some, you know, people that knew mutual acquaintances or uh, there was one guy that's doing Lake Placid even. So, oh, you cool. know, I was, was talking to him about that. And, uh, you know, it was just kind of an interesting, a different perspective. Uh, and, you know, it was not my fastest by any means, but it didn't have to be. And yeah. my takeaway from it is that, you know, I completed it in a respectable time uh, with minimal training. 
and I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it more than I've enjoyed races in a long time. And and honestly, that's going to have to be my approach to the full as well, mm-hmm. because for one, there just ain't no going fast. No, you know about any part of that. And if I get stressed about time, that's not going to help anything. Like no, I can't, it, I can't push myself to go not. faster. That's not, mm. you know, that's a good way to put yourself in a bad mental place real right. quick. If you start, you know, comparing time of, you know, oh, I should be at this checkpoint here. I should be going this right. fast. I remember when I was, one of the best things that I remember about the run course on Ironman is I met up with this guy. Uh, it, I mean, and to be completely honest with you at this point, I, I, I memory dumped most of everything that we actually right. talked about <laughs> just from being in a complete stupor at that point. But I mean, I met up with this guy like nine or 10 miles into the run and I probably ran with him for like maybe six miles, seven, miles, eight miles. Right. And it was literally that conversation that kept me going. Like we would run, we would both walk at the same time. We'd walk the aid stations. I mean, we had great conversation and it just, it helped pass the time. And I mean, there's something to be said for that. I mean, cause yeah, you're yeah. all suffering through the same stuff. Um, but it's amazing the difference that kind of attitude takes. I remember when I did my midterm at Rev3, you know, I had the same thing. I mean, you go into the midterm and you have your goals, right? You know, your nutrition practice, your pacing practice. So you go into it with a completely different mindset than you do to just go to race a 70.3. Right. And, and yeah, I mean, you're saying hi to people and you're waving and, you know, I remember I saw mom and dad on the run course of, of rev three at the half, you know, and I mean, I'm like, I ran like off the course over to the picnic table where they were hanging out, you know, I gave mom a hug and, you know, it, I would never really do that when I'm actually racing. Right. Um, yeah, it's a totally different mindset. You know, I'm going to wave and say hi as I go by, but I mean, I'm not going to... Yeah. If I'm going for time or something, you know, and they understand. It's not that I'm yeah. just trying to be rude, but, you know, taking the time to like run over and high five people and say hi and just be a generally friendly person. Well, and you consider that for a lot of people, it's either a once in a lifetime experience or once every so often experience. I mean, you say you've sworn off of it for the most part, you know, like unless your wife does one, you're not ever doing one again. Right. And I'm you know, pretty safe. Pretty I think safe at this point. Saying, yeah. Ex- well, I don't know. We'll see. She keeps getting better. That's uh, true. But you know, I don't know. Uh, I, I know with my, <laughs> with my job and the podcast and my business with my, you know, a couple dozen clients and, every other little thing I've got going on in life that I'm not going to be an Iron Man a year person at this season of my life. That's yeah. just, even if I enjoy the heck out of it, it's just not um, logistically, financially, you name it. It's just not going to happen. And so I want um, to really, really enjoy the experience. And my wife has said the same. She's doing it with me. And she said, you know, we've got family for sure on the bike course. We'll have, I'm hoping some people hang around all the way to the bitter end, but the majority of people that we've invited, we've invited to come see the bike course. There's yeah. a convenient spot for them to come that doesn't get them stuck in traffic. They can hang out oh, there. Cool. We'll go buy them for That's uh, always eight good. times in total. Uh, yeah, eight times in total. No, sorry, four times each. Okay. Um, out and back, out and back. That, that's nice. how that works. Uh, but, but she's going like, to get off her bike and talk to them for a minute. Yeah. You know, and actually just like, you know, and add two minutes to her 112 mile yeah. bike ride <laughs> to just, you know, not every time, but, you know, just to, you know, acknowledge that these people are here yeah. and this is cool. Um, and so I'm hoping that that kind of perspective also just maybe informs a little bit more of my racing stuff going forward. It, you know, if I go back to, you know, Olympic distance or something next year, obviously I'm not going to take the, uh, laid back lazy approach to racing to heart but if i can take the uh to uh to quote the leslie patterson simon marshall book the calm the fuck down yeah <laughs> you know right if i can take that a little bit more into account i think i'm going to enjoy it more uh because after gosh this is my i believe sixth season now in yeah. it, and i'm hopefully within two months we'll have done everything there is to do on the road side of things um you know i i've I've got to find a new way to enjoy it. And it can't just be constant new PRs. Right. Well, you, you kind of touched on it. Right. You kind of touched on it there with, with the, just the calm, the F down in mm-hmm. that we're not pros. I mean, it's fun to pretend it's fun right. to be like, Oh man, I'm, you know, some I'm of us are closer than others, but, but yeah. It's, but the thing is, it's like, 
we're not professional triathletes. Right. We're not going to be, at no. least anytime soon. No. I, I don't have any indication that anybody's right. going to start paying me to do this. I don't know if you do. If, uh, no. if you do, we need to introduce each right. other to it. But, you know, it, but what is, what is the point of going out and doing this if all you're going to do is just sit around, you know, with a sulk on your face, you know, just, oh, I'm so, so strong. I'm going to get out there and right. kick everybody's <laughs> ass. And it's just stupid. The training aspect of it, uh, too, just it's, it's interesting because I'm doing a lot less in some ways than I've done in the past for shorter races. Um, and really? As, and as a consequence, I'm not getting worn down in the same sort of way. Um, I'm, I'm maybe being a little bit smarter about it or being forced to be a little bit smarter right. about it. Uh, if you take that year of Rev3 like you were talking about here in Knoxville, I look at my training peaks for that year and I had a beautiful peak right in the middle of race season and then a downhill slide all the way into my first 70.3. Yeah. Uh, it was a beautiful, perfect bell curve almost. And it's just because, <laughs> you know, I would go and go and go until I couldn't go anymore. And now it's kind of like, you know, my weekends are very long right now. Yeah, I remember that a couple of, because you came out a couple of the group rides like leading up into that. I remember that when you were starting to hit that peak, because like we come out to the group rides and you'd just be like gone. Oh yeah, I was really good. You were really good. <laughs> and we were like, go bye. Bye, Chris. Right. See you later. <laughs> yeah, and I've had to I've had to temper that a little bit now. And that's that's definitely something uh you know, it just time realities for training and what have you too. But I think having that schedule and having weekdays where they're not overwhelming because I used to try to fit in regularly two hour or two and a half hour bike rides even on weekdays and uh there are times you can do that but you can only do that so much when you you know when you're working and and you're getting up so early like i am yeah. and it just starts wearing you down quite a bit sleep is very important i'm discovering that as, more and more as coach lana would say sleep is very important yeah um it, it does make a difference really i mean especially when you get up early um i i I suck at morning workouts. Yeah, like really. I'm getting bad. back into the. Like, I'm really bad at them. swing of things on that one. But it's uh, like this morning. Like I, I had every intention of getting up and doing my bike workouts because I knew I was going to record tonight. And I, I was like, okay, I got to get up early. I got to get up early and do my workout. My alarm goes off at four forty-five. Like <laughs> hell no. <laughs> so I hit the snooze button. I'm like, all right, I can still, if I wake up at like 5, 5.15, I can still get on the bike. I've got like, yeah, it's, it's a short workout. It's like 40, 50 minutes, you know, just a little bit of a workout. Alarm goes off again. I'm like, hell no. <laughs> finally, like 6.05, and I have to be at work at like 7.15. Right. I finally get my ass out of bed. I'm like, well, guess that's not happening today. <laughs> Sorry, coach. Yeah, you and I both are not necessarily the uh, green all across the training peaks every day, like clockwork. I think we both tend to be the, uh, no, I'm not doing that, or I got to move that, or it, that's just I'm, not I'm the I got to move that guy. Yeah, like, <laughs> I'm really good at that. <laughs> there are certain things that get moved and moved and moved. Right. But, I, you know, so like, like the first thing I did, I woke up this morning. I was supposed to swim tonight, too, but I was right. like, yeah, I got to record. That, that won't happen. So the first thing I did was like move that over to tomorrow. So I'll do that right. tomorrow supposed to have a bike workout in the morning we're supposed to have a fat max workout in the morning so oh, i just did that this morning we'll see how that goes i i'm hopeful if i can get my ass to bed that was a problem last night as i was up late right right you know i was binge watching voltron or something stupid <laughs> then i was like oh shit it's like 10 30 fuck i gotta go to bed and then by the time i actually get to bed then i wake up at four o'clock and my body's like nah man go back to sleep you're not doing this shit <laughs> so we'll see how that goes but whether you're ready to take on that first Ironman like me, improve your next century ride time, or just build up from a sprint triathlon to your next bucket list event, let LB Endurance be your guide on the journey. Head coach Lana Burrell brings her racing experience, coaching acumen, and education to craft a training experience that invigorates and challenges triathletes, cyclists, runners, and swimmers. LB Endurance offers one-on-one -on -one coaching, clinics, classes, training camps, and consultation. Certified, insured, and embracing the best in today's technology, Lana will turn you into a legit badass. Visit LBEndurance.com to learn more and like LB Endurance on Facebook. And for a limited time, LB Endurance has partnered with Xterra to offer you exclusive savings on their best gear. 
Use discount code CO-LBENDURANCE for 55% off the best-selling Vortex Full Wetsuit. Shipping now in time for whatever your summer has in store. Code CO-LBENDURANCE will also unlock serious discounts including transition backpacks for just $39, marked down from $99, inflatable swim buoys for just $12, normally $39, and a 10-foot inflatable SUP package for just $479, and normally retails for $1,200. Check out the link in our show notes to visit Xterra and lock in these amazing savings today. So let's talk about a week of training for you at this particular moment. Like, I mean, I remember back, you know, when I was around this time, like I said, I'd just done 70.3 midterm for the, for the Ironman. And so, you know, I mean, I'm doing, you know, probably 12, 10 to 15 hours roughly was kind of my goal for training when I was doing it. Um, how does that break down for you? Are you kind of hitting that volume or are you going a little My less? My volume is uh, probably about two thirds of that right now. Uh, I'm, I'm going with the little bit lower volume uh, approach to it. Uh, just surely because of time things and because my goal is completion yeah. uh, at this point. Uh, so that's worked out well. And that's why I mentioned like training a little bit less. I'm not, I'm not usually riding more than an hour on a weekday. Uh, now it's very structured and I'm doing you know, high cadence, high, uh, you know, maximum effort intervals. I'm, you know, doing low RPM, a 45 RPM hill climb oh, stuff. I love the muscle you know, tension, don't yeah. you? Oh yeah. I love that. And you know, so it, it, it is better than just going out and riding steady for two hours, honestly, yeah. in a lot of ways. It's more and, focused. It's more direct. You get it in, you get it done. You right. Get out. Well, and it know? keeps the over, you know, it keeps the logistical end of it down a little bit too, because honestly, for the, weekday stuff i tend to just do it at the gym and be done with I was it gonna say, you're knocking do out it on first the trainer thing, do it on the way to work and and there's no driving anywhere and hauling bikes and trying to get in and late especially when i go to bed so stinking early you know it, yeah. it just makes it a lot easier um the other surprising thing is that many weeks i'm only running twice um which i part of that is maybe coming with a very good base of run fitness from the spring and despite that disastrous 50 K uh, it was not for lack of run fitness. I mean, I did right. if anything, run maybe it was stout. Maybe it was uh, over training even at that rate, but yeah, Could it was, been. it was definitely not for lack of that. So I've got a good reserve to draw on and I've had some encouraging long runs lately that kind of show that, yeah, I don't need to be out there three or four times a week. Like I can do two or three and get away with it. Um, and then, you know, a couple good swims, I usually am getting in a couple of pool swims plus an open water. Sometimes the open water is just shorter. It's just a before yeah. the bike thing, get in for 10, 15 minutes just so I can remember, oh, I don't know how to sight. Wow, I swim really, really crooked. <laughs> I really don't like seaweed on my face, but I'll live with it. You know, watch, watch out getting, for the boat. Getting out of the water and you've spelled like half of potato. As, right. As <laughs> exactly. Al Al Dockery. Dockery. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. So I'm, I'm hoping that, uh, there's enough people in my race to just kind of follow. <laughs> there's a lot to be said for that. You know, I mean, at, at, at Placid, you know, you got everybody in mirror Lake and it, it's so small that it basically turned into a damn washing machine right. on lap two. Cause you got 2,500 athletes in this tiny little lake. But I mean, you really didn't have to sight. I mean, aside, right. there's the, the noted cable in the water that you can look right. at. But I mean, if you get near the cable, you're just going to get your shit beat. Right. So, I mean, but staying on the outside, I mean, there was always feet in front of you. You could just basically not sight and end up going. Right yeah. And that's a, right that's direction. a real plus for sure for people like me who just cannot swim straight yet to save their life. So uh, <laughs> that'll be, you'd that be a prime example of a person who could really benefit if they get the technology right for the goggles, the little blinky lights that tell you which right. way to go. I, I use the sun sometimes. If I can, if I can, uh, if you're figure looking at out, the sun, I think something's gone horribly. Well, wrong. my glasses are polarized. <laughs> No, I'll, I'll get it. Where, so you're supposed where, to look under the water, Chris. If you're if you're on your back, something's gone horribly wrong. No, no. I, I'm I'm using this direction of the sunlight, though. Um, I'll use it if it is not off to the side, but say it say uh, you know ten twenty degrees off to my right of where I'm going. If I can keep that reflection of it in the water, kind of that that beam of sunlight in that direction, I've I've managed to kind of make that work before. You don't believe me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just wondering where you're finding water in East Tennessee that's clear enough that you could even see any sort of sunlight coming through it. 
every you lake swim I, with your eyes closed <laughs> every <laughs> lake i've been in it's like you you look up and you sight and you can see where you're going and it's like you're putting your face in mashed potatoes it's like there's just nothing there it's just i must have been lucky and, this year <laughs> yeah you're right it's not everything's very clear but but yeah i guess i don't know maybe i guess well the quarry at, at mead's quarry for xterra that that's probably the cleanest swim that i've done right forever except for all the bodies probably yeah, but they're so far down. You can't find them. It's, it's all right. There's like cars and cranes and bodies. On, and on that topic, like but not 14 foot catfish or some shit. Right. There, I'm but. sure. Alligators. Um, <laughs> no, man, that's like placid. Oh, that's right. Um, on that similar topic, kind of totally off the wall, Michigan titanium in the past, I've been warned by uh, triathletes in the area, including um, Gene Carpenter locally here, who's done uh, titanium before. They have scuba divers in the water taking pictures. What? And if you don't know that, it can kind of freak you out. And if you do know that, it can still kind of That's freak you out. Really bizarre. I know. I don't know that I could deal with that. I'm gonna figure out if I have to deal with that. I mean, I that, I really want a cool underwater picture. Like I'm paying anything for that. That would be so weird. You're just like swimming along in the zone, and all of a sudden you there's get like a dude. There's a dude below, me. <laughs> or or a lady, or a lady. But at that point, it's a it. I'll, yeah, it, there's a thing below me there's a with, thing, with, yeah. with eyes, and it's like flashy lights in my face when I'm drinking. Yeah. <laughs> I don't that know about be, that. That it's, could be kind of interesting. It could be some real cool pictures, though. I hope they still have that this year, if I can get over it. Uh, uh, of all, know, of, If they were really the clever pictures. with it, they'd dress up like a shark or something. I know. That's what I'd do. Or a Loch Ness monster. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that'd be good. <laughs> So, yeah, about eight weeks to go here. Uh, it'll be interesting. But, yeah, the training overall is, is going pretty well. I, I'm having a hard time eating enough. Oh, my goodness. That's no, terrible. It's just, you know, and, and eating the right things because, let's face it, you know, never always been, you know, I've not really always been great with that. Uh, and and so now I'm finally kind of getting it under control and really paying attention to, boy, I really need to get in the calories. Like, I really need, and I need to make sure I'm getting the right stuff. Yeah. And that's made already just in a couple of weeks a very big difference. Um, you know, I'm kind of glad I recognized that with a couple of months to spare. It's a good thing you did. Right. It really. Because you know, I could be trying to change this, you know, two weeks before and it really would be difficult, if not impossible, to do yeah. anything different. Because um, I kind of had that problem where, like, I, I really like, I wanted to eat everything in sight and I would right. eat everything in sight. Right. But it was never what I needed to eat. So, no. I mean, I actually gained, I think, probably like six or seven pounds training for iron man because i would just use the excuse of i'm training for an iron man i'm right <laughs> i'm burning three bazillion calories a week i can eat all the shit that i want to eat and yeah if you look at my finish picture from iron man it's like ooh, that, <laughs> that tri top doesn't fit <laughs> quite right quite right quite right uh, so yeah so we'll fixed, see how that fixed goes that but, but yeah, yeah it's good for you glad you figured that out yeah, That'll certainly we're get, help your... We're getting there at least. It's kind of finally forced me to to do that because I know that if I'm not managing that, I'm not I'm not making it. You know, like really that's I know I have no doubt that today my muscles could go out and do it. It wouldn't be pretty, but my you know, like my fitness level could probably make it happen yeah. or, or very close or whatever, you know, but like so I'm not far of... off with that, but, but for, you know, trying to manage how much I'm eating, if I'm eating the right stuff, is it sitting okay? Which I've never really had a problem with before, but on a 70.3 is such a far cry from the 140.6. So your I'm... body does weird stuff when you're like 10 hours into a thing. Yeah. Mm, I mean, that's you, what you've thinking. been <laughs> exercising for 10 hours. Your body is like, You've never done that before. No. So your body's like, what the actual hell are you doing? <laughs> it's like, why are we still freaking doing this? Yeah. And that's, that's generally speaking, like you're probably going to be about at 10 hours in. you're going to be like about starting lap two. Right. Of the run or starting the second half of the run. Right. You know, and, and that's really when your body's like, we got to do all this shit again. <laughs> Like I, it's even worse. There's a four lap uh, course. Now, why does that not surprise me, Chris? That you would pick an Ironman that has like I more did, repetitive I shit did not than any pick it for that reason, though. <laughs> I picked it for many other reasons, uh, chiefly family and friends up there. Also, Michigan, you strike me as the kind of guy that would try to find an Ironman that like went around a track. No, but I would do a track marathon. That does not really shock me at all no it shouldn't like hold on let me dig out my shocked face and but put i this on. but i am kind of dreading lap number three i Maybe get, two I get as that as well like one one no problem two but and four 
I mean, it's gonna four, it's gonna suck, but it's just cake. like every four is the final checking yep. it off, not coming by here again. But three, the third six point whatever mile lap is going to be very very interesting. But it, for it, I'm the same way on intervals. But like for me, it's more like the first one goes really well. I hate the second one, but it, it the second one I think is always the worst for me. Like if I'm doing four. Because I still, like, on the second one, I've already put in so much effort on the first. And I know i got to do one more, and I'm not even halfway done yet. Like, when I hit three and four, I'm like, I'm halfway done. I just, you know, it, so. And I don't know. I think two is probably going to yeah. suck more than three. Because at least three, you're on the backslide. That's true. That's true. Kind of past the the. the you, get a, you get over that hump. You're like, all right, fine. I'm on the way down. I only got a half of this shit to do. So. Well, it's coming up soon, and, and one of the reasons I picked it, too, is you cannot beat Michigan Titanium on price. Ah, uh, they're early. there we go. Yeah, I'm cheap. <laughs> but, you know, and, and it's interesting, too, that uh, I, I like they have an Olympic and a half and a full going on, all the same thing. Total numbers in the past, I think about five 600 athletes for all the races, and the, the full has always been kind of like under 100, and that has its pluses and minuses. Certainly on the bike course, it's possible it's going to be kind of lonely on the second lap, and uh you know, all of that. Yeah. But the benefit to that too is not going to get beat up on the swim. That's not going to be overwhelmed. You know, not going to have drafting issues on the bike course. Cause it's clogged with people like, and, and, and let's be honest, it's the roads that I grew up riding. I'm familiar with some of these roads from when go. I was 13 years old. So the memory lane aspect of the bike course is going to make it just fly by. Uh, it will remind me of my 108 mile ride on a mountain bike. Um, my first what? century. What? It was a mountain bike on the road. I used to hold on, Derek. I used to ride on. a mountain bike. You, <laughs> but you did it wrong. Oh yeah, you rode a mountain bike on the on road, the road for, for 108 miles. 108 miles. Let's dissect this statement. Yes. Let's this... start out with why. No. Let's say oh. <laughs> I rode a mountain bike. Yes. That's great. Okay. Those words together. <laughs> that Fine. works. I rode a mountain bike. Good for you on the road not so much we're starting to get off track right mountain bike on the road then we add in for 108 miles chris what were you thinking i was thinking something even stupider than what i did this should surprise no one let me um explain <laughs> let me if explain I, if i let may, me explain the the thought process that went into this first century ride of mine okay so at that point i had done a metric um on a mountain bike keeping up i was gonna say on a, a big wheel bike. what yeah exactly <laughs> right i moved from the tricycle <laughs> into the yeah i had done a metric with friends that had road bikes and kept up with them on mountain bikes so i'm like okay you know whatever it was just what i had and i was i was riding it and i could i could do 15 or 16 on it now granted these people on road bikes weren't speed demons but you know i could i could pedal a pretty good pace and i just kept doing a lot of 60 ish mile 50 60 mile rides on my own but i thought how far could i make it in a day and i had some delusion before i started out not only of a century because i'd never done one before but maybe if i start at 6 30 it was around this time of year in june if i start you know when the sun comes up and ride till it gets dark maybe i can make 200 oh my god chris <laughs> Now, what? this mountain bike was in no way like fit to me or anything like that, nor did it have more than uh, two bottle cages. So I know what you're thinking. I did drink water. I didn't take any food with me. I mean, because why? Um, so I, I did. Uh, I did. What? I did uh, think on. about the fact that I didn't have, uh, you know, more than two bottle cages and thought, well, it's going to get really annoying to like fill all these up. <laughs> I can't even wait to say this. So I filled a backpack up with Nalgene water bottles and rode with 20 pounds on my back. You did? Whoa. To what? refill my cage water bottles. My back hurt worse than my legs. Ah, oh, dude. So I, I, you know, go from gas station to gas station, stocking up on little Debbies as the day goes on in candy bars. So you fueled a 108-mile <laughs> ride on little Debbies with a backpack <laughs> full of Nalgene bottles. 
And I made you it. You can't make this shit up, folks. I made it home after eight and a half, just at 108, with still a plan in my head that I'm, I'm going to take a break, maybe get some real food, and I'm going to head back out. We had a little kitty swimming pool out in the back, and it was hot. And I <laughs> fell into the swimming pool. And then I and realized, woke up the next day. Yeah, just about. And then I thought, <laughs> I can't get back up. I can't even move my legs. I should probably not do this anymore. Wow. And I couldn't walk for like three days after that. Wow. No That's... training, no stretching, no nothing. That and is s- absolutely And there is no way with all fantastic. of my training today that I could replicate that. I, I don't know if someone said they'd give me $10,000 to do that again, that I could manage that. I'm just spoiled. Now. I think <laughs> that we should go back to your roots and that you should fuel your Iron Man no. on Little Debbie's with a backpack full of Nalgene bottles. Not my first one. <laughs> I I think it would maybe work. Maybe never. I think I'm... it would work. I think we could take Chris back into his heyday uh-huh. with this. He's going to strap on that L.L. Bean, <laughs> fill it up with 50 pounds of water. Oh, you're assuming I had a nice backpack that actually was like ergonomic? No, this was like a cheap $10 giveaway backpack that had no support. And My Little uh, Ponies on it? No, no, it was just like... Oh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. No, it was plain. It was like plain green or something like that. <laughs> you know, nice heat absorbing and whatnot. And oh, it yeah. Didn't, and it, of course, it didn't have any sort of like... Um, it just had the shoulder straps. It didn't have any sort of like chest thing. So it's just hanging on your shoulders. Oh, the dude. stuff they tell, oh, kids can't have... And I'm these, guessing you were wearing a school. cotton shirt, right? Oh, yeah. I don't, my moisture wicking <laughs> hadn't been invented yet. Oh, and not even my, like my shorts. Met, not bike shorts. I, I didn't remember my port, first pair of bike shorts till I was in my 20s. Oh, wow. There was some chafe. Dude. There was some serious chafe. Oh, so I, I, I tied the, the, the stra- ends of the straps across my chest to get some chest support in that backpack. But yeah, no, it was, it was a mess. Um, you know what? Iron Man's going to be easy, Derek. After that... <laughs> You know, I'm glad we got this out. This is pure, I don't even know how we got on this. This is pure gold, Chris. Absolute <laughs> gold. I cannot wait for this to come out and people to hear this story. Well, let's let's not delay anymore. Let's uh, just about hit publish on this. We'll remind people you can find all of the crazy exploits of many triathletes, not just myself, at losttransition.com. <laughs> Subscribe, rate, and review. Let me know how stupid I am in the comments somewhere on Oh, this. please do. Please do. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm fully aware of that regardless. And, uh, and we'll be talking to, uh, Casey Anderson next week. Casey Armstrong. Thank you. Casey. We'll be talking to Casey Armstrong. Cut, chop, <laughs> go back. Casey Armstrong. But yeah, Casey's coming on our local mountain bike superstar, mountain bike phenom. Uh, she likes to go play and do really long, dumb, stupid races and win them. Uh, so she's going to be fun to talk to. Another show awesome. coming up soon. Mr. X Dara 2016. Marcus Barton is going to be Marcus on Barton. the show. Looking That'll forward. be a real blast. Too. Oh, yeah. Looking forward to talking to him. Uh, but for right now, the just speedy lizard himself. The speedy lizard. So uh, we'll see if he's done anything dumber than I have. We'll have to tell him the mountain bike story. Oh, yeah. He will love the mountain bike story. All right. Well, let's tell him the mountain bike story when he comes on. Uh, for right now, we'll, uh, we'll <laughs> see you next time. Uh, subscribe, rate, and review. We do appreciate that. And we'll talk to you again soon. For Derek Tingle. Good night, everybody. I'm Chris Gerard. Have a good one. <laughs>